we start with the barbaric abduction of Kevin Lunny last week. It shocked all of us, but for years now, five men have been subjected to a campaign involving vandalism, sabotage, bullets in the post, assaults, arson attacks, and a pig's head left outside a house. Now, one of those men is John McCartan, and John is here with us tonight. John, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. It's been an incredibly difficult week for you, but it hasn't just started this week. You've been living, and your colleagues, with these threats for a long time. What's it like sitting here tonight? Talk to me about what it's been like. Well, it, it's quite surreal. <clears throat> um, it's, it's difficult to comprehend why people would want to do this. It's difficult to comprehend how people can countenance it. Uh, so uh, I, I guess the enormity of it and the gravity of it is, is probably not really uh, on our minds all the time because if we allowed that uh, to, to be the only thing we thought about, uh, you couldn't function. Mm -hmm. So we have our lives to live, we have uh, businesses to run, we have families uh, to raise and uh, we have to keep moving. Would you say though that you have been living with fear for a number of years. Is that fair? Um, I guess it's you're a bit like the frog boiling in the water. Uh, you don't feel it heating up around you when it heats up so slowly. Um, we've we have become somewhat hardened to the criticism. I mean, it just started with um, sort of defamation and accusations, and then it it moved into uh, suggestions that we were risking our safety, and then it moves into uh, actual threats, and then it moves into uh, the acts of violence. Uh, so uh, I guess it's been it's been a slow burner for the for the few years while we're there, uh, and I couldn't say that we have always lived in fear because we've just gotten used to it as we go. Mm -hmm. But you have been told that you'll be killed. Yes, yeah. Um, but, you know, again, we set about what was a very important project for our region. Uh, the Queen businesses uh, had been uh, under the administration of uh, a company whose sole responsibility was to return the greatest value it could for the investors. Uh, we felt that uh, the danger was that when you start to examine that and you say, well, why have we got a therm factory in Ballyconnell producing a, a light and difficult to ship product that's been sold on the, in England and Wales and Scotland? Why not move that factory over there? Why not move the packaging factory to where its market is? Why not move the light block factory to where its market is? Uh, and we felt that only a locally uh, based management team uh, and locally based uh, uh, governance structure would want to hold those businesses there. So we set about trying to hold those businesses there. Um, there are currently 850 people working mm -hmm. directly in those businesses. Um, you can presume that that supports about two and a half thousand jobs in a very impoverished part of the world. Um, so so, so when, you, when you said there earlier on about you know, it being a slow burn and you're aware of all of these things happening but you get on with your life, then the attack on Kevin happens and it all comes home to roost. I mean now you must be in a very different place. Yeah, well, you know, it's been sort of cyclical in that we've had, uh, first of all, uh, an arson attack on, on uh, one, a business of one of our directors. And you kind of say, well, this is the watershed. They've, they've gone too far this time. It'll all change now. And then we had, you know, um, been shouted at in the streets and been threatened. Uh, then we had the actual physical attack of Dara and Kevin uh, in, a, in a filling station. And we said, well, that, surely this is it. This that is, was earlier this, this year. Yes, yes. And we said, surely this is it. This is the watershed now. This is where, where we're going to get a result here. We're going to get resolved to, to, to finally put an end to this. And then this happens to Kevin. Um, you know, the barbarity of this is stark. It's, it sets it apart from anything else that has happened to us. In fact, it sets it apart from anything else that I ever remember happening to anybody in my region in my lifetime. And, you know, I, I, I lived through the tail end of the troubles. Um, so, you know, and we are, it's fresh with us. We're still coming to terms with it. But, um, uh, yeah, I, it, it's, it's just difficult to process it and to actually contextualize it and see what does it mean for us now for the future. Mm -hmm. And you spoke about your family. Um, you have children, you, you have a wife. Yeah. I mean, I think if I was in the situation that you're in, that my spouse would probably be saying to me, it's time for you to stop and, and to give this up now for all of our sakes. I mean, does that occur to you? Yeah, I mean, there is that weight of responsibility that I have to, uh, to my wife, uh, a hardworking woman, principal of our local primary school, um, raising five kids. Uh, it's a busy household. It's a difficult household. That's the most important job I have in the world is to be a father to that family. 
Um, nevertheless, there's, uh, there is a, a weight of responsibility on me also and a duty of care to the wider economy uh, and uh, to the project that we set about uh, mm -hmm. it, when, when we formed QBRC and decided that a, a local, a local uh, governance structure for those businesses was the only way to maintain that as the most important economic driver for the North West. So despite what has happened in the last week, your message tonight is that you and your colleagues, the other directors, are not going anywhere. Yeah, well, look, I'm not going to speak for anybody, uh, but all I can tell you uh, is that the weight of responsibility we still recognise and we haven't lost sight of the project that we set about. Mm -hmm. um, the posters that were erected in, in the local area, were they, were they photographs of, of you? Yeah, uh, so they, they, they took photographs of us, they, uh, you know, off some website or other, um, designed them up like an election poster. Um, I think they said, wanted, a traitor, grabber. Um, I think they appeared on social media on Facebook's page uh, with the words, Cromwell's men are back again. And a reference to the Shank Hill butchers and that we had been through a kangaroo court and uh, found guilty and that our justice would be administered us to us swiftly in the same fashion as it was to the mm -hmm. Shankill Butchers. Uh, and and are, I have to say... You, I mean, you, you have to walk past those, right? That's fine, yeah. drive past them. But your family is driving past them and looking at them. Yeah, well, you know, my kids did say, you know, Daddy, I have little twin boys who are, uh, they're seven yeah. now, but at the time I remember them asking me, are you going to jail, Daddy? Why are those, you know, what do those posters mm -hmm. mean? Um, you know, and it was very frustrating that they stayed on Facebook until last night. Uh, the Shankill Butcher reference, all those threats stayed on Facebook for years, right until last night. Had you the first reported time them to Facebook? Yes, we had made every effort possible to have those removed, and mm -hmm. they remained there right until last night. Mm -hmm. How's Kevin? Well, Ke Kevin is a, a, a robust character, I have to say. You know, I, I, I said before that uh, I never respected anybody more than Kevin, anybody I've ever worked with, I've never respected them more than Kevin, but, you know, his, his resolve is, is extremely impressive. Um, he... Kevin has always been a man who never complained. Uh, it's never about Kevin in his own mind. It's always about the people that he's working with and the, and, and the job that he is setting about. And, uh, you know, in talking to him, it's quite obvious that he wants to make sure that the rest of us are, uh, have as much comfort from talking to him as possible. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about driving home tonight? Well, I suppose it's a, it's a dark, wet night. Um, I'm, uh, you know, I live up along... A, a long driveway and you have to wonder uh, what, what awaits you. So uh, I certainly hope uh, that the future will, will, uh, will see us get some sort of comfort uh, that we can function in safety and move around in safety and that we can say to our families uh, w we are correct and right to, to continue with this project. Um. And do you have Garla protection now in light of what happened? Um, I'm, I'm not a policing expert by any uh, stretch of the imagination, so I, I don't know what their movements are. I know there are patrols, but um, I, th there's, that's there's no all one I know. following you around in terms of, 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 of a guard, the security detail, or you, that you're aware of anyway? Not, not that I'm aware of, no. Mm -hmm. Would that give you comfort if that did exist um, for you? Well, you know, I do have to wonder uh, how could anybody have done what they did to Kevin had there been a pair of eyes on him at the time? Uh, and and I certainly, you know, I would certainly be more comfortable driving to my house if I if I knew that uh, somebody knew where I was at all times. Because you, you said this was going to happen. Yeah, uh, there's nothing new in this. We have been threatened explicitly uh, to our faces, threatened explicitly in correspondence sent to the company, and um, uh, you know, not only have we said it, it's been reported in the local media that uh, there were going to be deaths and funerals out of this mm -hmm. um, and it has been said uh, by even uh, Dervila here has, has, has said it in the past herself uh, in, in the media so it's no while, while we're all shocked by this I don't think people are surprised. Mm. It, was, it has been said in recent years that there was a, a, a group of people a large group of people in the community who were disappointed that the Quinns weren't in charge of, of Quinn Industrial Holdings and had an issue with, with you and your colleagues. What do you say to that? Well, look, we were all disappointed that Sean Quinn couldn't return uh, to, his, to, his, to his businesses immediately after the, that financial meltdown and, the, and that catastrophic collapse. Um, but, you know, all I find within the community, this is not a fractured community. This is not a community with rumps. This is not a community with factions. This is a united, law-abiding community who are respectful 
of the efforts that were made to build all those businesses down through the years. But they're also respectful and thankful for the efforts that have been made to preserve their jobs and to preserve those businesses. And I find nothing but respect from my community and from my neighbours, and I find nothing but respect from the staff in those offices mm -hmm. and those buildings and those, uh, and those factories. And we saw the march. Was that on Friday of, of last week where right. people came out in, in support of you? Yeah, that was the, you know, the company uh, staff. It was completely unprompted by anybody except the staff just said we would like to do something uh, to show solidarity. And, you know, I, 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 I didn't count them obviously but I'm sure there was well over a thousand people there to my eye and uh, you know that means that it wasn't just the staff who turned out uh, there was no public call out there was no posters put up there was no ads taken out there were no flyers put on cars this was just the staff who said let's just get together and have a walk and a thousand people showed up and do you feel supported now I mean beyond beyond that I mean do you feel supported to the point where you think something will happen now to put you in a safer place um, yeah, I can only hope. I can only hope. I, certainly, I feel very supported by the community and very supported by, uh, by, by those who live around us. People walk up to me all the time now and people t express their disgust at what has happened. People express their thanks to us for the efforts that we've made and expect, ex express their appreciation for uh, our resolve um, to, to continue our project.